Oh, that's uh, the funny. Hammonds. <laughs> Brother and sister. Going good. Well, thank you. Going good, Sister Justine. Thank you. Look at Sister Linda Smith. We got two Sister Lindas on there. Pastor, you're live. Okay, thank you, Jack. Sure are. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started, guys. Thanks, everybody, for being with us today. Uh, what is it, honey? Oh, let me turn my phone down. All right, let's bow for a word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this time that you've given to us to go back again to Pilgrim's Progress Part 2. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for bidding our golden moments to roll on. Even as we slumbered and slept on last night, there were those who entered into eternity, but you spared us and allowed us to come to this day. So we pray, oh God, that uh, we're able to maximize it by gleaning whatever we can glean and lay to our hearts that will be beneficial to us in our everyday walk. And as we, the Lord, be light in a dark place for others who may be sitting outside the experience of Christ, help us to take advantage of every opportunity you give us to witness uh, for your name's sake and for your glory. Now, Lord, we ask you to be mindful of those who are struggling in their health, those who have had loved ones slip away from them, uh, whose hearts are tender right now. We pray for Ms. Maddie down in Wichita who's facing some surgery right now. Pray, oh God, that you remember Belinda Hammonds and uh, her tender heart and her family as well. Uh, Amber uh, Parks at the passing of her mom here a couple of Sundays ago. Lord, we just pray that you do as only you can do. And that is to mend the brokenhearted, uh, ease the troubled mind and minister to the wounded spirit. We just pray that you do those things and help us to be about doing those things that are pleasing in your sight at the same time. We thank you for it now and praise you for it. Go with us and stand by us uh, as we study here today in the strong name of Jesus. And Lord, just before we close our prayer, I ask you to remember Pastor Eli James Ben, there in Oakmoge, Oklahoma, and Tony, Lord, the folks there in Tulsa, Oklahoma, both struggling in their health, God, both pastors, both men who have served your people, we pray that you be gracious to each one. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, Sister Shirley, you got a little song you want to? Bring to us here. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, well, let me think about that. Okay. You can, you can say something. Oh, oh, I can say something. She, my <laughs> wife's got a song. She had to I get think. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I didn't bring the hymnal with me. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. You didn't bring the hymnal. That's all right. We can do something. Okay, well, we can do Oh, uh, no, I don't, I don't we, mean, oh. Uh. <laughs> what can we do? <laughs> I really wish that there was one sitting on Okay, the you had one that you were going to do? Yeah, that okay. was yesterday. Oh, That's my. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, All right. Uh, Let's do it. In times like these. We need a savior. Times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid, solid rock. In times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle, be 
very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid, solid rock. This rock is Jesus. He is the one. This rock is Jesus, God only begotten Son, be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid, solid rock. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you got some people clapping. How about that? <laughs> What a joy, what a joy, what a joy. Is this Sister Asbury there on iPad? Oh, yes, yes. Bless you, darling. Good to have you with us. Praise the Lord. I, I didn't see your name, but I got you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All righty. Uh, we're going to get at it. Um, uh, I have my not only my, my song leader, but my reader. <laughs> Amen. We're going to start moving here. Let me get the page and... We can rock and roll. It's so good to have you with us. Uh, we're moving along. We're going to finish this chapter today. There are only a, a several more pages to it. And so we'll be able to get that done. All right. I'm ready, Cheryl. Okay. Uh, so we left off there at Mr. Manason's home okay. in Vanity. And he's just sent his daughter, Grace, to call the those who are... Uh, the, as Mr. Honest called them, good men uh, or good people in the town. His friends, Mr. Contrite, Mr. Holy Man, Mr. Love Saint, Mr. Dare Not Lie, and Mr. Penitent have, Penitent, I'm sorry, have all come to meet the pilgrims as they're on their way. Then Mr. Manason, their landlord, said, my neighbors, as you see, I have a company of strangers who have come to my house. There are pilgrims who have come from far off and are going to Mount Zion. But who do you think this is? He asked, pointing with his finger to Christiana. It's Christiana, the wife of Christian, that famous pilgrim who with faithful his brother were so shamefully treated in our town. At that, they stood up amazed saying, we hardly thought we see Christiana when Grace came to call us. This is a very pleasing surprise. Then they asked her about her welfare and if these young men were her husband's sons. When she told them they were, they said to them, may the king whom you love and serve make you like your father and lead you in peace to where he is. Now, you know, I, I, I wanna just interject here because I think it's really important to understand legacy it's important to understand uh, multiple generations after us. And I think I mentioned it last time how important that is for us as we live out the principles and precepts of God's word to purposely pour into our posterity these uh, principles, the word of the living God, a love for the Lord, uh, and not only um, uh, talk about those things, but our lives ought to demonstrate the who-ness and whatness of the Christ in our own lives. As we live out uh, daily before our families, uh, what uh, a love for the Lord looks like. And then 
of fastening that to the walls of the hearts of our generations after us. And they will then do the same with their children is our hope because we perpetuate holiness in the earth. We perpetuate a love for God in the earth. We perpetuate righteousness and the things of the Lord, the fruit of the spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance that, that's resident in the heart of the believer. When we do that, we perpetuate that kind of glory in the earth. And uh, uh, there's just, it's grievous that we have the kind of uh, not only nation, but world that we're living in now. And we, if we're ever going to raise a witness for the cause of Christ, that time is right now. And, and at, our, at our local assembly, it is the year of the family. And we're hoping that families will get around a table at least three times a week and read and pray and together and, 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 and love God. Because it's not good enough to just tell our uh, generations after us. It's not good enough just to live right. I think we have to do both and. It can't be a either or, but both and. We have to live right and we have to uh, uh, share, teach uh, the principles and precepts of God's word. So that's just so important. And in this particular text, our narrative, uh, I'm sure they're surprised because Christiana despised her husband. When he went on pilgrimage, she despised him. They ridiculed him. And, and, uh, and now they're getting to see the glory of his life and how others uh, along the way esteemed him because of his righteous life. How wonderful is that? How wonderful is that? If we live a righteous life and impact people around us for the cause of Christ, we don't know how we're affecting others or who we're affecting for the cause of, of, of the kingdom. So it's just worth talking about that uh, we really examine our own hearts in light of what we're reading now and then uh, help to perpetuate that and to pour into the next generation that kind of glory. All right. When they had all sat down again, Mr. Honest asked Mr. Contrite and the rest what condition their town was presently in. Mr. Contrite answered, you can be sure that we're full of hurry at fair time. It's hard keeping our hearts and spirits in any good order when we're in a challenged condition. He who lives in such a place as this and has come to put up with what we do has need of an item to remind him to take heed every moment of the day. Wow. Mm, 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 mm. That is incredible. Yeah. Uh, we, in the mind of Jesus all the time, because living sounds like in the world that we're living in, we've got to have something that we can keep focused on because uh, in these conditions, it could, it could draw our attention away, draw our mind away, draw us away if we let it. So Man. I got that. Absolutely. And, 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 and that's when people make missteps. Mm -hmm. That's when you people fall into holes and find themselves in, in compromising positions or, or difficult situations, taking their eye off of the road, you know, mm -hmm. off of the Christ, not, being mindful of where we're going and who it is that's leading us. And man, you turn your head for a minute and the enemy, I mean, you know, the world system is much like Vanity Fair. Things are, yeah. things are, yeah. lights are blinking and flashing and things are going on and, right. and, and it attracts our attention and right. takes it away from right. uh, this, uh, this way that we're in. Jesus said, I am the way, the way that we're in. The things of the world can take yeah. our attention away from that. And I, I, I really uh, uh, am hopeful, you know, that, that we'll latch on, that, that the world, that the church, the body of Jesus Christ will stay focused on its mission in the earth right now. And that's uh, not only uh, being a light, but harvesting the souls of men. So it's, it's really important. But how are your neighbors now as for peacefulness, ask Honest? They're much more moderate now than before, answered Mr. Contrite. You know how Christian and faithful were abused in our town, but lately I say they've been far more moderate. I think the blood of faithful weighs heavily upon them to this day, mm. for since they burned him, they've been ashamed to burn anyone else. Mm. In those days, we were afraid to walk the streets, but now we can show our heads. Then the name of a professor of faith was detestable. 
But now, especially in some parts of our town, where you know our town is large, religion is accounted honorable. Wow. And that, that, that's amazing because we have this sacrificial offering mm -hmm. of one individual faithful when he and Christian came to Vanity Fair uh, that made the difference. Their, the city was uh, changed to some degree by uh, his offering, as we see in the narrative. Uh, and, and then, of course, Hopeful joined with Christian as a result, gave his life to Christ and then followed Christian on to Celestial City. It's amazing. I love, I love what happened here. And, and again, we don't know how impactful our lives are. We don't know who's watching us. I mean, as we go about doing our daily living and, and our profession, uh, professing rather Jesus Christ and uh, the lives that we live, we don't know. We just don't know. Then Mr. Contrite asked them, please tell me, how does it go with you in your pilgrimage? How is the country treating you? Mm. What's happened to us is what happens to wayfaring people, answered Mr. Honest. Sometimes our way is clean, sometimes foul, sometimes uphill, sometimes downhill. We're seldom at a fixed place. Mm. The wind is not always at our backs, nor is everyone we meet with in the way a friend. Mm. We all, we've already met with some notable difficulties, and we don't know what are don't know what are still lurking. But for the most part, we find to be true what's been said of old. A good man must sub must suffer trouble. <laughs> true. In this world, we're gonna have trouble, but be right. of good cheer. Yes. You speak of difficulties, said Mr. Contrite. What kind of difficulties have you met met with? No, said Honest. Ask Mr. Greatheart, our guide, for he can give you the best account of that. Uh, and I did have a note here said, now we're talking about testimonies of deliverance for the encouragement for others. Wow. That's what we get ready to do. And, that, and, and that's what testimonies are. Right. And can be beneficial for. Right. Uh, and I'm thinking about what uh, a John, the beloved disciple, wrote in the book of Revelation, how the children of God who were being harassed by the enemy, the text talks about how Satan came down having great wrath because he knew his time was short. He made war against the saints, but they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death because really uh, that, that testimony is important to us and others. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening well, here. Getting ready to go, so yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's powerful stuff. Wow. We've been harassed three or four times already said great heart. First, Christiana and her children were attacked by two ruffians whom they feared would take away their lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. We were attacked by giant bloody man, giant maul, and giant slay good. Actually, we accosted the last one rather than being attacked by him. And this is the way it was. Uh, just to note too, all of these giants, and that happens in our lives too, all of our um, things that come our way seem seems so much larger than us, so much bigger, uh, look like giants in our life, but hold on. Yeah. <laughs> and we should do like they did the third one. We accost them and don't let them overcome us, but we can, uh, we can uh, go out and attack our giants instead of them attacking us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> After we've been some time at the house of Gaius, my host and that of the whole church, we were of a mind at one time to take our weapons with us and go see if we could battle any of those who were enemies of pilgrims. But we'd heard there was a notorious one thereabouts. Now Gaius, since he lived around here, knew better than I where he hung out. So we looked and looked until we finally spotted the mouth of his cave. Then we were glad and stirred up our spirits. We advanced up to his den. And when we got there, we saw that by mere force, he had dragged this man, Mr. Feeblemind, into his net and was about to bring him to his end. Greatheart went on speaking, but when he saw us, supposing as we thought that he had another victim, he left the poor man in his hole and came out. So we went, so we went at it. 
So we went at it with everything we had and he prepared himself forcefully. But at the conclusion, he was brought down to the ground and his head was cut off and we set up by the wayside for a warning to those who would practice such ungodliness. Mm -hmm. To show, I'm telling you the truth, here is the man himself to affirm it, the man who was like a lamb taken out of the mouth of the lion. Ah, is that not like David? Yeah. <laughs> I know that guy. Yeah, just like David, boy. He went and took the lamb out of the paw, the bear, and of the lion and killed both of them. I'm telling you, it, it's, it's reminiscent of that. Right. Yeah. I got that they did. Right here. You do? Yeah. You got that David, note? Yeah. David yeah. <laughs> Great minds David think alike, David, Shirley. David and his lion. <laughs> <laughs> and bear. <laughs> oh, boy. Then Mr. Feeblemind said, I found this truth to both my cost and comfort. To my cost when he threatened to pick my bones every moment. And to my comfort when I saw Mr. Greatheart and his friends approach so near with their weapons for my deliverance. Wow. Then Mr. Holy Man said, there are two things that those who go on pilgrimage need to have with them, courage and an unpolluted life. Wow. If they don't have courage, they can never stay on their path. And if their lives are corrupt, they'll make the very name of a pilgrim stink. Mm. Wow, that's powerful, is it not? That, that is powerful. Not only do we have to have courage and know that no matter what we face along the road of life, uh, there's going to be deliverance because that's the way of the be believer. Uh, Christ uh, has power to deliver. He will do his business. He will protect his own. And the word of God is clear that the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears open to our cry. But the thing about the second part of that is uh, we have to live a clean life. Man, somehow holiness has been watered down in the day and the time that we live in now. Good, clean Christian living is out of the window. Folk just kind of accept any and everything for the sake of numbers, for the sake of dollars, for the sake of anything, as opposed to standing to it. When I came along, it was holiness of hell. You, I mean, they, they, that's how they said it. It's holiness of hell. It's good, clean Christian living, or you got to give an account of it. Come to the altar. Don't come in perpetrating. If you're struggling, say you're struggling because there are some people who will pray with you, pray for you, fast, turn the plates upside down and be there with you to, to uh, usher you through difficult situations. But man, any more people just kind of uh, do anything, say anything, live any kind of way. And, 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 and when they name the name of Jesus Christ, don't depart from iniquity. Just, just keep on. It's like a Band-Aid on sin. And, then, and, and I'm telling you, that's going to be to the destruction of those who think that, that God has to accept anything, and he doesn't. Uh, uh, Apostle Paul wrote uh, in his letter to the church in Galatia, he talked about, um, you know, being not deceived. He says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that saw it to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So God is, is, is uh, 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 expecting good, clean Christian living and holiness from those who have been baptized into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God is clear that God has made him, that is Christ, to be unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. He's all of that. And we have been made clean when we were baptized into him. We have attain to the glory of God in the Christ. And I'm telling you folks, it's time to live right. And that's why a lot of people don't want to have anything to do with uh, quote unquote church because folks' lives are raggedy. And so we have to do something about that. And I think it's incumbent upon all of us as believers uh, to be careful about how we live. Now, listen to me now. I'm not suggesting that everybody that named the name of the Lord is perfect from that moment. No, no, no. Spiritually, spiritually, we are. We have been moved from the world to the body of Jesus Christ and obtained unto sanctification that's in Christ. But practical sanctification happens as we go. I mean, what I mean by that is stuff that's hiding back up in us is there. And the word of God will come in and push stuff out of us. 
the spirit of the living God will shove stuff out of us. And we become more like him day by day. So this business of making excuses, well, you know, the Lord understands. Well, yeah, he understands. That's why he gave you the Holy Ghost. He gave you power. He gave you a living word to go in and, and cut stuff out and shove stuff out. So we have to give ourselves to this business of uh, sanctification uh, as we go. And I mean, it, there, are, there are multiple facets to sanctification but we're already spiritually as sanctified as we're ever going to be if we're a true believer because we're in Christ. But this business of living our lives out in the, in the marketplace, that is, wherever we happen to be at a given moment, is huge because it points to the power of God to cleanse our lives. And then ultimate, ultimate sanctification is the fact that we're going to be um, uh, taken out of the world. We're going to be raptured. The, the word harpazo, the Greek word harpazo means uh, snatching away. God is going to come through here and snatch the church and keep going. Christ will never set a foot on the ground at that time at the rapture of the church. The word harpazo means a violent snatching away. He'll come through, grab the church and keep going. And I'm telling you folks, that is the ultimate expression of sanctification to be not only sanctified from the world, I mean, from the, you know, from the world system and placed in the body of Christ, but I mean, taken out of the world totally at the rapture of the church. So let's live right. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry for preaching. I, I, it just yeah, got up in me here. I mean, <laughs> go ahead, honey. <laughs> live right for the glory of God, because as we live, as Mr. Holy Man said, the very name of the, uh, it makes the name of a pilgrim saint, and we're a reflection of God, then it's a reflection on him too, if we're not uh, living right, because, you know, as it's already been said in a different way, they'll look at you and say, well, I thought you were a Christian. And, yeah. you do, and living in that, like you said, it not perfect, but when you're living like that, a corrupt life instead, and then name it the name of Jesus. Well, it's a bad name on the on the Lord. Absolutely. As well as us, as we are supposed to be a reflection of him. Absolutely. Then Mr. Love Saint said, I hope this warning is not needful among you, but there are really, there really are many who go upon the road who show themselves to be strangers to pilgrimage rather than strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, then Mr. Dare Not Lie said, it's true. They have neither the pilgrim's garment nor the pilgrim's courage. They don't go uprightly, but go all astray with their feet. One shoe goes inward and one shoe goes outward. <laughs> and their pants are ripped out behind them. Here a rag and there a rent to the sliding of their Lord. Wow. Is that, that is a powerful statement. Goes to the end of a raggedy life. <laughs> Goes to the end of being double-minded. James said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Not some of them, all of his ways. And to be uh, have one foot going one way and another foot going another way suggests double-mindedness. And so we have to be very careful not to allow uh, that kind of uh, schism, a dichotomy to be at work in our hearts because it'll, it'll, it'll create dissonance. It will create dissonance in our hearts. It'll create this storm always brewing, never knowing what to do and how to be settled on moving along the road of life all the way to heaven. <laughs> amen, amen. We're on our way to heaven. And so as we go, uh, there is a way uh, that uh, the, the, the Proverbs writer said that seemeth right unto a man. The ways thereof, uh, but the end thereof, he says, are the ways of death. So we got to come away from the seeming and knowing where we're headed and how we ought to get there. And of course, the book that God has given to us, his word, the Holy Writ, the Bible, uh, is how our steps should be ordered. The, the psalmist said in 119 Psalm verse 11, thy word 
have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee? 119 Psalm verse 105 says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I'm telling you, the word of God is what leads us and guides us and gives us direction about how we're to live our lives. So let's stay at it. They ought to be troubled over these things, said Mr. Penitent. And the pilgrims aren't likely to have that grace upon them and their pilgrims, pilgrims' progress until their way is cleared of such spots and blemishes. Wow. They sat talking and spending the time like that until supper was set upon the table. They ate it and refreshed, refreshed their weary bodies, and then they went to rest. They stayed in the fair a great while at the house of Mr. Manason, who in the process of time gave his daughter Grace to Samuel, Christian's son, and for his wife and his daughter Martha to Joseph. You know, those, those are uh, a couple of things. Uh, the, the last paragraph that you were reading from goes to the end of this business of sanctification, um, talking about the spots and blemishes mm -hmm. that, 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 that born again believers have. No, don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about the world system. I'm talking about us, people who are in the household of faith. Uh, again, things that we're not in touch with, things that we uh, should be praying, Lord, reveal to me these areas in my life that need to be dealt with. Because sometimes we're out of touch with our own selves. And it's very easy to look into the lives of other people and see stuff, but not be in touch with our own shortcomings. So that's what sanctification goes to. It goes to the end of allowing the Lord to cleanse us and to sanctify us and to purge us and prune us and make us fit for heaven. Listen, and the other thing is, I, I think is wonderful about this, is even though we can read this in a few days, it's years. This journey is years in the making because we see Christiana who left home with uh, youngsters, now all four of her sons are married. So it, it means that there's time passing as we go along the road in the narrative. And so keep that in mind as we, I mean, it's just not a, a short hop from the city of destruction to the city of celestial city. I mean, there's life going on on the ground here and it's taking time and, and being uh, lived out. All right. As I said, the time they stayed there was long for it was not as in former times. The pilgrims grew acquainted therefore with many of the good people of the town and did what service they could for them. As she was likely to do, Mercy worked hard for the poor for which their bellies and backs blessed her. Right. And she was an ornament to her profession there. And to tell you the truth about Grace, Phoebe and Martha, they were all of a very good, very good nature and did much good in their positions. All of the son's wives were also very fruitful. So Christian's name, as was said before, was likely to live on in the world. Wow, how wonderful is that? Is that not wonderful? <laughs> when we see um, multiple generations of our own family systems, uh, manifesting the glory of God or allowing the glory of God to be manifest in their lives, it speaks to that. And I've said that about, uh, uh, about Pop Easley and his family that's on with us today down in Florida and Teeny in Kansas City and, and, and uh, Geraldine and others who are part of that system, uh, Mother Clayton before she went to heaven and all, all, of, all of them, uh, it's like the Hammonds family. It's, it's like uh, we were talking to me and Mike Hancock and there and their sons and their grandbabies are growing in grace and watching our own family and, and mom and her generations. I'm telling you, it speaks volumes about good, strong Christian living and how um, uh, our generations are affected after us. And I saw Jan Tucker's name on my Facebook uh, just a minute ago. Her mother, just an awesome woman of God, has multiple generations following in her train. And, and her mother, Mother Anderson, Grace Tucker's mother, Mother Anderson was a lover of God. And, and so we see this thing reverberating through the years, generationally. When the power of God rests in your home, it'll show up in your children, grands and great-grands. I'm telling you folks, 
uh, we've got to, we've got to grab a hold of this thing and live it out in a way. And there's joy. There's joy in Christian living. I I, I mean, <laughs> oh God, I I, I tell you. I, I, I struggle to express the beauty of holiness. I struggle to express the joy of Christian living. I wouldn't do it any other way. I mean, I tried the world. <laughs> I tried it. I tried it. I tried it. There's nothing there to compare to the glory of living for the Lord. It's just not. And so I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm so hoping that our church, again, at Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church, this is the year of the family, and we're talking about affecting multiple generations. Joe Scott is also on Facebook. Joe Scott has, there are four generations of them uh, at our church. Amen. And it's, and it's amazing, or three generations of them at our church, and it's amazing how uh, we see this thing reverberate in family systems. Uh, it, it, we just got to do it. We, just got, we have to purposely prepare our posterity. Uh, for the cause of Christ. It can't be haphazard. It can't be just falling out of the sky. It can't by, be by osmosis. That's not how you get this. It's by teaching. It's by pointing. It's by living. And it's by loving and nurturing. I'm telling you, it, it's, anyway, I'm, I'm done. Go ahead. <laughs> no. <laughs> for now. Okay. <laughs> While they were staying there, a monster came out of the woods and killed many of the people of the town. It would also carry away their children and teach them to suck its whelps. Pause here, because you know I had to look up whelps and what all of that meant. Yeah. So uh, it was stealing the children and teaching the children how to feed uh, their newborn yeah. little monsters. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, that's what they were. I guess they were like nurse. They were stealing the children to be nursemaids to their newborn as the newborn creatures. Puppies, yeah. uh -huh. they puppies, a cub is what uh, or newborn of that species or whatever it was, but teaching them how to uh, feed them. Now, now, no man in town dares so much as to face this monster, but instead everyone fled when they heard the noise of its coming. The monster was like no other beast upon the earth. Its body was like that of a dragon, and it had seven heads and ten horns. It made great havoc of children, and yet it was governed by a woman. This monster set forth conditions to men, and men who loved their lives more than their souls accepted those conditions, so they came under its control. Man. Is that really? Listen, that's something. And of revelation. course, it reminds us of, of the of the uh, revelation. revelation. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And the woman that's riding the beast in the book of Revelation. Yeah, absolutely. Controlled by a woman. That's, yeah. yeah. That was that scripture. Right. Those those passages, um, the reference was Revelation 17, 1 through 6, and then Revelation 13. Yeah. Uh, was where this that this uh, came the from. Beast. Yeah, yeah, came from. Yeah. A description of this. Yeah, I, I love what Bunyan did because he's using a lot of scriptural references oh, yeah. in the narrative as he's unfolding it as he goes. Yeah. yeah, God used him in a great way to pen this uh, allegory. Yeah. Now, Mr. Greatheart, together with these who came to visit the pilgrims at Mr. Manason's house, entered into a covenant to go and engage this beast if perhaps they might deliver the people of this town from the paw and mouths of this devouring serpent. Then Mr. Greatheart, Mr. Contrite, Mr. Holy Man, Mr. Dare Not Lie, Mr. Penitent went to meet him with their weapons. At first, the monster was very rampant and looked upon these enemies with great contempt. But being sturdy men with weapons, they beat it so soundly that they made it retreat. So they came home to Mr. Manason's house again. You must know the monster had its certain times in which to come out and make its attempts upon the children of the town and people of this town. Also, these valiant, worthy men watched it in those times and continually assaulted it, so much so that in the process of time, it became not only wounded, but lame. Um, I did make a note here is that we've got to keep watch for our enemies, make sure we can we, uh, watch and pray to keep them at bay. Yeah. Uh, 
because uh, they'll heal, they'll return. And and, 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 and you have to resist. Return. You know, right. the word of God is clear that we have to resist the devil, devil. and he will flee, the text says. Resist, resist the devil, not entertain him, but resist the devil and he will flee. And so these men are valiant men. You know, in this day and time, we need people who can take the sword of the spirit, the word of the living God, and stand in the face of adversity, yeah. wielding the truth of God's word, be outfitted in the armor of God, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, rulers of the darkness, this world, the text says, against spiritual wickedness in high places or wicked spirits in high places. We are at war for the very souls of men with the prince of the power of the air. And the only way to rebuke the lying devil is with the truth of God's word. It is the sword of the spirit. Amen. Amen. The devil ain't just going to sit around and say, oh, Carol, y'all can just take all the souls you want to take. And no, no, that joker, he's going to resist. He's going to make war. And like you said, we, you know, we got to, we got to stand tall. We got to stay in the word of God. We have to be outfitted with the armor that God has given to the church for the born again believer to be dressed in. And somebody said, every day I put my armor on. No, 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 no. I never take it off. Stay outfitted. Amen. And you might forget a piece one day. No, no. Just, just don't pull it off. When you put it on, stay dressed for battle. Sleep ready for battle. Amen. They wake you up two in the morning. Wake up with your sword in your hand. Bless God. Be ready to go out to battle. Ah, uh, somebody ought to say amen. <laughs> Woohoo, boy. Mm. Also, it was not able to make the havoc of the townspeople's children as it formerly had done. And it is truly believed by some that this beast will certainly die of its wounds. This therefore brought Mr. Greatheart and his friends great fame in this town, so that many of the people who stood, who, uh, so that many of the people who still wanted their taste of things, yet also had a reversed estimation and respect for them. Mm. It was for this reason, therefore, that these pilgrims did not receive much harm there. True, there were some of the lower, lower sort who could see no more than a mole nor understand more than an animal. Those had no reverence for these people, nor did they take notice of their valor and adventures. Mm. Well, the time grew close that the pilgrims must go on their way. So they prepared for their journey. They sent for their friends, conferred with them, and had some time set aside to commit each to the protection of their prince. Again, there were those who brought them such things that they had and that were fit for the weak and the strong, for women and men, and so loaded loaded them up with such things as were necessary. They then set forth on their way and accompanying them as far as was convenient, their friends again committed each to the protection of their king and departed. They who were of the pilgrim's company went on therefore, and Mr. Greatheart went in front of them. Now the weaker women and children were forced to go as they could bear. And by this means, Mr. About to Fall and Mr. Feeble Mind had more to sympathize with their condition. When they had gone from the townspeople and their friends had told them goodbye, they quickly came to the place where Faithful was put to death. They stood there, they stood still there and thanked him, capital him, who had enabled him, Faithful, that is, to bear his cross so well and rather because they had found they received a benefit by such a manly suffering as his. <clears throat> they went on, therefore, talking about Christian and faithful and how hopeful joined himself to Christian after faithful was dead. So I made a couple of notes about the benefits that had been that were received by um, these pilgrims because of faithful. Um, one being a town that ha that was uh, that had changed or was changing mm -hmm. was being influenced at least 
most of the people were tolerable of Christians and not uh, totally against them. If they knew they were Christians, then you know, you're know you gonna mess up our town and so we've got to kill you. And the other benefit is that they were encouraged um, to go on um, in the, you know, in the footsteps of faithful, mm-hmm. um, to go on there, to continue on their journey. And then the other thing was that they also saw that someone was changed from that town because of faithful and, uh, Christians, um, um, being able to withstand and then go on. So, uh, yeah, it, it, notes about that. The, the persecution of, of faithful, uh, just stood out. I yeah. mean, they actually reverenced the place where he sacrificed his life. Kind of remind me of the stoning of Stephen and and how you know the believers were scattered abroad upon the persecution of uh, Saul of Tarsus and how you know many other people came to know Christ as a result right. of you know the scattering because people went for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and. It's a marvelous thing. So, you know, in a sense, it says to me that we need to stand our ground. We need to be bold in our profession and be about our father's business in a way that other people are impacted and recognizing that people are taking notice, even though we may not know it or we may not see them uh, or dialogue with them personally about it. uh, We can say of a surety that uh, a good, clean Christian living you know, has a weight on the ground and in glory. So, I mean, it's well worth the time it takes to get it done. I want to I want to acknowledge uh, some of our Facebook followers that that are with us now. If there's someone above Patrice Hammonds, I I uh, you may have been there before I booted my phone up. So we have Patrice Hammonds with us today. We have May Brown with us today. Barbara Caldwell with us today. Good job, Sister Caldwell, on Sunday with uh, God's grace. Don Piggy Hammonds is with us. Mother Juanita McGill is with us. Steve Rowland is with us. Stevie, that's my friend. Uh, We have uh, John Frazier, my youngest son, is with us. Uh, (laughs) May Brown says, seeing little bird, Uh, uh, Hancock. (laughs) (laughs) Diana Scott is with us. Tracy Reed, D.L. Lee is watching. Octavia Carr, Lady Octavia Carr. Phaedra Phillips is with us. Uh, Yvonne Fletcher, Jan Tucker, way down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, is with us. Latanya Lewis, uh, I don't know, is T in Georgia yet? Oh, okay, okay. Latanya Lewis, uh, Jewel Miller is with us. All right, Jewel, blessings to you, man. Uh, Brenda Dean, Brenda Gorman Dean, her mom, a dear, dear woman, had one of my house churches in her home back in the day. Uh, Joanne Scott, there's Jojo, my dear friend. There's Kyle. (laughs) Boy, 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 that's Kyle Rollins. He and his little wife is tuning in. Uh, Lisa Taylor. Erica Cox, the evangelist, is tuning in. Uh, Betty and Kevin McNeil, my son, Pastor Kevin McNeil, and his dear wife, uh, elect lady, Betty McNeil, are tuning in. Sherilyn Black, blessings to you, Sister Black. Uh, Let's see. uh Uh-oh, wait a minute. I got it. Andre L. Harris. Another one of my sons, pastor out in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank God for Pastor Andre L. Harris. He and his dear wife. Thank God for them. I uh, think, that, think that's everybody. Well, let me see here. No, Denise Tucker, my great niece down in Georgia, is tuning in. Bill Mills is tuning in. LaVonda K. Jackson. Bless you, Vonda. Is tuning in. Ida May Hughes, Mama Ida is tuning in. Praise the Lord. Mama Ida, bless you. Amen. Erica Hill, the faithful witness. Erica is a faithful witness. She and her daughters. Amen. Thank God for them. 
Praise the Lord for all of you who tuned in by way of Facebook. Thank God for our Zoom audience way down in South Florida. <laughs> I got and and I, yeah and our uh, and our uh, what do you call it when you mute friend we got a mute guard watch it <laughs> is that Carolyn no that's Patrice hey Tracy blessings to you Linda Smith uh, the Taylor family Reggie uh, Bridget's iPad thank God for Bridget's out there that's the Reyes family Reyes sister Bridget Reyes praise the Lord. Hey, man, Brother Reyes, we thank God for them. Uh, Libby Moore is tuning in. Thank God for our Zoom audience. And Linda, Linda Smith, uh, she and her mom, Mama Ida is Linda's mother. Thank God for them. We appreciate the Lord. And there again, it's generational kind of glory. Mama Ida, been a lover of God. She's in her 90s. And then her daughter, Linda, and then DJ, her grandson, all uh, people that love God. And, and so this business of continue to love your mother Reyes, Sister Reyes's mother was coming to our, before COVID, would come to our daytime Bible study. Again, generational impact uh, from one generation to another, people loving God because of faithful people in their generation loving God and passing the value on. I'm telling you folks, uh, it's, it's, it's just how, how this thing works. And so we need to be uh, uh, intentional in how we live and um, uh, recognizing that we're in the service of the Lord. He called us out from among men for no other purpose but to be about his business and to be a witness in the earth of who he is for the glory of God. And one way we do that is by magnifying the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm telling you folks, it's joy. And so Shirley and I, Really appreciate you guys coming along with us today. We are uh, uh, enjoying some downtime. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were in Illinois. Last week, we were in New York. And today, we're down in Southern Missouri. <laughs> Been here for a couple of days just to get some downtime and relax and uh, get back in the saddle. Be praying for us. We have a funeral Saturday. Uh, uh, Ernestine Franklin uh, slipped away uh, from her daughter and son and went to heaven. Uh, Sunday before last, and so we're going to funeralize her this coming Saturday, so please keep us in your prayers as well mm -hmm. as we serve, and them, keep them in your prayers, amen, we're going to get on out of here, and uh, again, we're grateful, let's have a word of prayer, God, our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for all our ears have heard and our hearts have felt, thank you for going with us and standing by us as we seek to glean from uh, this allegory, written by John Bunyan, you breathe through him this allegory that's beneficial to us today almost 400 years ago. And so we are uh, rejoicing at what you've done by way of him. Help us to be about your business. Help us to uh, impact the world for the cause of Jesus Christ. Lord, be glorified in us and all of those that will affect for your namesake in the days ahead. Go with us now and stand by us and keep us till we're able to come together again in the strong name of Jesus, who is the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Blessings to all of you. Praise the Lord for everybody. Amen. 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 We thank God for you. Thanks, Jackie.